Hello, I'm Jamila Masaiva, an international social etiquette consultant and author of etiquette books, Etiquette, The Leads You Need to Know, and Afternoon Tea Etiquette. If you would like to order my books, please make sure to email me at info.jamilamasaiva.com, written down below there as well in the description box, and you'll get the full information about how to order my books. Here on my YouTube channel, I talk about etiquette, soft skills, self-development, I do book reviews. So if you're interested in all of that, make sure to subscribe. And if you're an old subscriber, welcome back to my channel. I'm delighted to see you here. Today's video is dedicated to handshake etiquette, something that was requested oftentimes by my viewers, but I took a little bit of time with that. And now that the life is going back to its normal, things we are outdoors we're meeting and greeting people we are socializing let's refresh our memory about how to properly greet others with a handshake what is a perfect handshake and what are some bad handshakes to avoid before we get into the details about the proper handshake and the poor handshake let's talk a little bit about its history the gesture of handshaking other people actually originates from greeks 5th century bc soldiers would use to greet each other in this manner so that they could check if the other person is carrying any weapons or not. The gesture of handshaking the other person uh, symbolizes peace, unity, that I am coming to greet you unarmed, I'm not carrying any knife, any weapon in my arms. Though the, of course, the whole idea of checking if the other person has a weapon or not has changed nowadays, but the hand gest handshaking gesture actually means that we are trying to establish connection rapport with the person that we're meeting either for the first time or perhaps we're meeting over and over again. First things first, let's look at some bad handshakes so that we can recognize when we meet someone that that person has this kind of a bad handshake. I'm sure when I'm going to describe them, you'll recognize someone that you have met probably once in your life or maybe some, that you, someone that you know, or maybe it's even you who does this kind of a handshake. You'll recognize the handshake and you'll be able Able to work on it so that you can master it and have a perfect handshake. The first poor handshake is called Fingerella. As the name suggests, you can understand that this kind of a handshake involves only fingers. When you're extending the per a hand to a person to handshake, they're extending their fingers rather than their entire hand for a handshake. Unfortunately, women are more faulty of doing it, either because they feel shy, they don't want to go for a handshake, or sometimes they might extend their fingers for a hand kiss and the man might not understand this and instead handshake them. So either way, if you are guilty of doing a fingerella kind of handshake, try to stop it. If you're going for a handshake, that means you have to offer your entire hand rather than just your fingers. Try it at home for yourself. Go and ask your sibling, your partner or your friend to just offer their fingers to you instead of their hand for a handshake. And after you handshake them or finger shake them, try to think of yourself, what kind of impression did that make on you? What did you think of a person who only offered their fingers for a handshake? You'd probably use the words like timid, someone that you can't trust, untrustworthy, maybe not confident. The adjectives that you don't want to associate yourself with. So if you want to have a firm, confident impression on someone, make sure that you offer your entire hand and not just your fingers. The second unpleasant handshake is called wet handshake. As the name implies, you can understand that this is when you're handshaking someone and their palms are wet. This could be due to a genetic disposition, then perhaps some kind of a medical treatment like Botox inside your palms can help you overcome this problem, but again, consult your doctor with the recommendation. Or you could use, for example, the baby powder lightly dusted inside of your palms or using the blot wipes that you can use for your makeup as well, especially when you have the oily skin. You could use those kind of wipes to blot the insides of your palms so that they're not wet before you're offering your hand for a handshake. Another old way of doing handling this problem is carrying a handkerchief so you can gently um, dab it on the insides of your palms so they are drier when you offer your hands for a handshake. Another reason for a wet handshake is probably you've been holding a glass of cold champagne or wine in your right hand when you were out and about at a social networking event where you're offered glasses of alcoholic or non-alcoholic cold drinks. Then you're holding one in your hand and when it's time to handshake, your hand is wet from the glass. What I would suggest in that case is always hold the glass in your 
left hand so that your right hand is always dry and ready to be offered for a proper handshake. Even if you have mastered the technique of a perfect handshake, if your palms were wet when you offered your hand to someone else, I guarantee you that the lingering aftertaste of your handshake will not be pleasant. The third poor handshake is called a bone crusher. Again, as the name suggests, you can understand that this is a kind of a handshake that tries to show that they have a firm handshake, when in fact it's not firm, it's just trying to crush your bones. It's so hurting, it's so unpleasant that you want to get rid of that handshake as soon as possible. If you know someone who does that, uh, I'm sure that you don't have a pleasant feeling with that person. And if you're someone who's guilty of doing that, try to avoid it. Do not hurt other people's hand when trying to establish power. What establishes a power is a firm, engaged handshake, not the one that crushes other people's bones. Also, for women especially that love wearing big rings, when you're out and about to meet someone, greet someone, you know you, you'll be offering your hand often for a handshake, make sure that you don't wear any heavy rings on your right hand side. Switch it to the left hand so the right one has more delicate um, rings so that when you are shaking someone's hand, you're not hurting theirs. If you're a bone crusher or if you know someone who is doing the bone crush handshake, actually they're never the ones that are powerful. They're the ones that want to seem like they are. The fourth bad handshake is called a dead fish. As the name suggests, you can understand that dead means inactive, not engaged. This is when the other person who's offering you the hand in a way that's a dead fish it is when they're offering their hand and it's not engaged in a process of handshaking. So it's them offering their hand to be shaken rather than to shake your hand as well. So this kind of a feeling when someone offers you a dead fish might make you give you an impression that that person lacks initiation skills, lacks leadership skills, is not very uh, proactive, doesn't, you know, doesn't take initiatives, it's not a really good sensation. So if you are the person who's guilty of doing dead fish, try to engage your hand in the handshake. Do not just your, offer your hand for a handshake, be the one to shake the hand as well. The fifth poor handshake is called bent arm pull in. This is a kind of a gesture that President Donald Trump was guilty of doing over and over again with other world leaders. And I assure you that didn't make them feel comfortable at all. This is when the person is greeting you and handshaking you, they're pulling your arm in closer to them. Some people in certain cultures do not like proximity as much. They have a bigger personal space. So keep that in mind, you have to maintain the correct distance with the person that you are greeting with a handshake. The sixth poor handshake is called an aggressive pumper. This, as the name suggests, is quite understandable that the person who is greeting you with a handshake is holding your hand for a prolonged time and they're pumping it very forcefully up and down for an extended period of time. Again, President Donald Trump was really guilty of doing that and he has made a lot of world leaders feel uncomfortable about this. You can watch a clip of President Dunn greeting Japanese PM and that definitely put him in a very uncomfortable position. So when you're greeting other people from different other cultures, make sure to keep in mind that not everyone loves that kind of a physical contact for a prolonged period of time. Now that we have looked at some of the very poor handshakes, let's look at what are the techniques or the rules for the perfect handshake. So first things first, when you are doing a handshake, you're extending your hand straight in the line that follows your natural body line. Then you make sure that your fingers are wrapped around the hand of the person that you are greeting. Your fingers are also engaged in this process. Rule number two, when you are going for a handshake, ensure that the web of your hand is touching the web of the other person's hand so that you can feel this connection with the other person. This will help you to better establish rapport or otherwise a trustworthy relationship with the other person. Now that your hands are connected web to web, fingers wrapped around the other hand, make sure to shake the hand firmly. Firmly means that you have to feel the other person's hand in your hand and engage actively into the handshake. You do not just offer your hand to be shaken, neither, neither do you try to bone crush the other person's hand. The fourth rule is that your elbow should ideally be at 90 degrees 
but of course sometimes depending on a situation if you are standing up to meet someone who is seated or if you're seated for some reason can't get up you're meeting someone who is standing of course this trajectory can change but generally when you are both standing then your elbow should be at a 90 degree like this Rule number five is the number of pumps. Remember the aggressive pumper who would pump it for hours and hours? Now in this case, the rule, general rule for a proper handshake is three to five pumps the most. If you do less than three pumps, it might seem like you are shy, that you're not confident, you're probably someone who can't be trusted because you're trying to get away from the handshake as soon as possible. But if you prolong the handshake for more than five pumps in a very aggressive manner, that can show that you're trying to establish dominance, that you're being aggressive, you're perhaps being pushy. Again, keep in mind the culture of the person that you're meeting. In some cultures, elders considered paternal to hold the other person's hand, younger person's hand for a while, pumping it for an extended period of time. In other cultures, people try to get away with least amount of hand, uh, pumps. So whatever it is, keep in mind the culture of the opposite person that you are handshaking with, but the optimal number is from three to five pumps. The sixth rule for perfect handshake is that the handshake should be done in up and down motion. It's not side to side, it's not in wave-like motion. Just keep in mind that you have to pump the hand up and down. Rule number seven for a perfect handshake is ensuring that you maintain an eye contact with the person who you're handshaking with. This is very important. So our hands are connected and so should be our eyes. Sometimes people offering their hands for a handshake gaze at their own hand or the hand of the person who they're shaking their hand with. This is not the right way of doing it because this might give an impression that you're trying to hide something, that you're not someone that could be trusted or reliable because you cannot look into the person's eye. If you catch yourself looking at your hand, make sure to turn your gaze back at the gaze of the person you're handshaking with. Rule number eight for a perfect handshake is of course smiling. When you are handshaking the other person, make sure that you give them also a genuine smile. While they're gazing in your eyes, make sure to smile at their face because that translates as trustworthiness, as warmness, as someone who could be trusted and someone who could be approached and you want to make that impression. So make sure not to forget to smile. And the ninth, the final rule for a perfect handshake is making sure that you stand up when you handshake other person. All kind of greeting forms happen on foot. This is about showing the other person that you respect them. You're physically fully there to shake their hand or to greet them in any other form of greeting. Of course, there are some circumstances where you cannot physically get up. Maybe you're seated at the concert and there are a lot of seats and people have occupied all the seats and you physically cannot fully stand up on your feet. Then you would gently rise up a little bit from your seat, say, excuse me, I can't stand up, offer your hand for a handshake. Or you're in a meeting room and you're seated at the table and someone arrives, you cannot fully stand up on your feet, you can just gently elevate yourself from the seat, again, excuse yourself, explain that you cannot get up, fully excuse yourself for that, and then offer your hand for a handshake. But in all other circumstances, if you're seated in the room and someone walks in and you can physically get up, then make sure to stand up and then offer your hand for a handshake. Thank you so much for watching this video until the very end. I really do hope that this video is useful for you now that we are out and about meeting and greeting new people. This video should come handy to those that have forgotten how to properly handshake. If you like this kind of a content, make sure to give the thumbs up and also comment down below if you like this video and if you found it useful. If a lot of people like this video, I'll make sure to film the second part of the video where I'll teach you how to establish dominance or look confident with your handshake and also how to maneuver around handshakes that are trying to establish dominance over you. Make sure to write below if this is something you're interested in and I'll be more than happy to film new videos for you. Thank you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!